MacGuffins here. Uh, patch notes revealed today. I got the video, so I just wanted to introduce myself and uh, let you all know that if you want, I'm going to be giving my feedback on what's announced after the video so that you don't have to hear me talk throughout it. So, enjoy, and thanks for watching. That's correct, Bart. Well, we do have the God skin cards available for you for That's the gods right. that are going to be coming in. So, the way this will go, guys, is to give you the general overview of how this is going to go down. I have no idea where my camera is. There it is. <laughs> there is our first one. is Kakulkin, who is the winged serpent. Here is his god card. This is the remake of Aokwong. So, basically, Aokwong, the dragon king from Chinese mythos, has been uh, given the Hunbots treatment, if you will, uh, and ported over to a Mayan god uh, named Kakulkin, which is the Mayan equivalent of Quetzalcoatl mm -hmm. on the Aztec side, who you may be aware of due to... Final Fantasy teams, here's his golden skin card as well. So what we'll do here is we'll go through the god cards that are coming into the game, then we'll go through the patch notes, and then we'll take a look at these gods actually in the game. So uh, you can see all of their sweet abilities and everything coming a bit later. There's the golden Kakulkin. And his recolor coming up next as well. These three skins available, of course, right away. As well as his mighty s mighty serpent skin? Or what was it called? The Celebration! 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 That, that is right. Sacred this is, Dragon. This is really sweet. Look at this that one. That is a really good card. The oh. Sacred Dragon skin is going to be moving over to Kukulkin and is going to retain the Alquang voice pack. Ah, there you go. So, uh, you will have access to that skin, ladies and gentlemen. And there is your Kukulkin skin. There is an Arachne recolor as well coming Ooh, into this patch. look at and it. And there... She is. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking for the recolor of yeah, Arachne for a while, right. even before the change. So now they got it, and they got the change as well. I know they a lot of people are Arachne. excited about that. And uh, we have a few other skins as well that we have uh, showed a little bit earlier. We have the uh, the Bacchus Elvis skin. This is a pretty sweet skin. Only going to be available in chests to begin with, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, purchasable for 200 gems for a chance to win the Bacchus Elvis skin. Uh, it looks pretty sweet. If you didn't see the skin reveal video yesterday, you're definitely missing out. He is, uh, well, not only horrifying in his facial expressions, <laughs> <laughs> some of those screenshots, but there he is. Bacchus the King skin is available, and uh, I think some sweet art. I think that's uh, Steve's sketch art, actually. Is that really? It looks... Be available That's after. UI features and updates our next big header in the patch notes here. Guys, uh, Smite now features a new in game HUD. You may have seen this previewed briefly in some of the spoils coming out yesterday. That but was right. Uh, top bar is more concise. Team panels have vertical and horizontal alignment options. The ability bar has been enhanced. Stats and item panel combination option is available, which means you can move basically your stats over with your items on one side of the screen. A new home screen has been added. With promoted content, features, news, and videos accessible from it, the screen can be minimized. It'll actually look really cool. We'll show that in game as well. One of the things that I'm really excited that's coming up next is the diamond frames that we're going to be seeing yes. on the characters. That's right. So uh, a lot of people have been asking for these uh, custom frames really that we've cool. been yeah. seeing. Yeah, they do. And we're going to be getting diamond frames for the characters that you have rank 10 with after this. Uh, we also see that the diamond loading frames are available. If you're rank 5 or above, you will now display the legendary frame when loading into a match. So a diamond frame and a legendary frame of 5 and 4, respectively, or 5 and 10, respectively. If you're rank 10, or, or I already said that, uh, there is a new option along the bottom menu bar to set loading frames. So similar to what the voice packs are, you can set what frame you want in case you don't like the way that the diamond looks or the legendary looks. You can set it back to the normal one. Yes, and the eSports supporter frame, which is uh, Odyssey Reward, will be configurable from that as well as all of your other frames. Uh, there's a new option in the loading frame tool for users to hide their god stats, um, which some players don't want everyone to know that they have 40,000 kills on Zeus. Or some people don't want you to know that you only have 200 kills on Zeus and you're still ranked 10. And you have like 10,000 assists. Yeah. That's so sad. <laughs> uh, Georgia Peach has a new animation, and it looks classy. Ooh. Uh, also, the default god skin is now properly highlighted after locking in your god. And when you open a treasure chest and have all of the items, if you are one of the people that owns everything in the game but still like to open chests, Me. there is now feedback explaining what happens and how awesome you are. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're I really awesome. I, I do it quite often. All right, so for Miscellaneous, we have a new player experience in PE that has been enhanced to include new tutorials for both Arena and Conquest. Uh, the favor rental system for gods has been enhanced as well ah, and now has options for multi-day rentals. Cool. That is really cool. In case you maybe want to test like test out a god one day, but you won't be able to play them too much, maybe for the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, you can get two-day yeah, really, I mean, that's like uh, going to, well, you're probably mostly too young. This, this makes me feel old that I used to go to video. weekend and then hopefully you buy it because we love money. I'm trying to remember even the last game that I played on at Blockbuster that I can't even remember the that. The last game that I rented? Yeah. 
Oh man, who knows? Probably some Madden, like Madden <laughs> 1999 or something. Uh, so changing your player icon and equipped it icon after you've locked in your god is now working properly. There is new. Uh, there's a new icon on the emotes tab for the god screen to indicate which emotes are available for gods. Just as you were saying, if you're someone that likes to buy and get everything, you will now be able to know if there is a new emote for a god that is coming out. Well, changing your player icon and equipped icon after you've locked in your god is now working properly. So, if you want to change your icon to match the god you play in every single game, now's your time to shine. Uh, still under the miscellaneous tab is where we are, guys, in the patch notes. So these are miscellaneous. Uh, continuing on, the god's lore page will now always reset to the beginning when selecting a new god instead of maintaining its state. The notification window now displays the user's equipped player icon. Minions now immediately despawn when reaching an enemy portal in Arena. I guess there were some kind of bugs. And uh, fixed description on the siege queue. Fix an issue where jumping would sometimes mute another player. Fix an issue where jumping would sometimes mute another player. You don't know, man. That's that a cool one. That, yeah. That explains to me why no one talks to me. So, uh, a variety of diamond skins have had minor visual updates and improvements. A lot of the gods having different, like, shines and shings to that. We see, shings? uh... Yeah. Oh shines no. and shings. Ooh, I want a shing on my god. Uh, so there is a, an issue fixed right now when items sell price would not update after leaving the fountain. And when using auto-purchasing and auto-leveling skills, if you turn it off mid-game, it will be set to uh, what you start on for the next match. If you manually level a skill, mm -hmm. while auto-leveling is on, mm -hmm. it disables auto-level. This That's is actually right. a really sick uh, new feature, basically. You can turn it on auto-level, and if you elect to skill something manually, it will turn auto-level off for you. Uh, sometimes you realize that you need help, and then realize that you don't need the help later on in the game, and you don't have that option. Notifications no longer pop up during gameplay as well, meaning that it, you won't get notified your friends are coming online. Thank and you if you're like me that. and Kelly and Drybear and you have 40,000 friends, I've actually they're always coming all online. Of them, so. I well, if, have like if you're an actually nice person like me and Drybear and you have lots of friends, <laughs> you're uh, no longer be notified. And the next big update, which I know a lot of people have been looking forward to, is the new god rotation is going to be Isis, yes, Sobek, Chalk, Jibalanke, and Thanatos. God damn it, Europe. I'm, I'm imagining that we're going to be seeing a lot of Thanatos. Yes. Gods damn it. <laughs> well done, Kelly. Moving right along to general gameplay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, some general gameplay changes coming in. This is going to be itemization. Uh, but let's go on. M made adjustments. That's a strange way to start a sentence. To better equalize the number of worshippers gained from playing Conquest versus other game modes. So Conquest becoming more and more the place to earn your favor and worshippers. Uh, we also see the first one of the day has been removed from the league queues. I know a lot of people were looking forward to that, especially with the free gym weekends that we've been having, because uh, a lot of people think that they'll just put their first one of the day into the league conquest uh, yeah. and play it when they're not actually carrying Yeah, this game. is one of the big community kind of uh, requests. Mm -hmm. A lot of you have requested that basically, as Kelly was saying, a lot of times players will log in and go to get their first ones of the day to get their free gems or just the added favor, and uh, that is not really the spirit of what the league queue is. The league queue is intended for tryharding. And uh, generally being a, uh, trying to do team play and having people that are really invested into it and mostly very knowledgeable about their gods and uh, mostly tryharding. Yeah. And you don't want casuals in your tryhard queue. No, not at all. So uh, we're going to be moving on to items right now. The changes to wards and sentry wards. Sounds on ward skins now only play on deploy and death. And wards and sentry wards can now only be hit by basic attacks and always take three hits to destroy. I know this is something that you yeah. have complained a lot about. I the don't fact know that about complaining well, a lot I mean, about. I mean, oh, I too. Think about it. You're a uh, support. You're... I never play support. You're so back. And you have to try... You see a sentry ward there and you're attacking it for probably ten seconds because you don't want to waste your abilities and yes. it just takes forever to So play. basically the idea here is that it was a little bit silly that wards were raid bosses at the end of the game because they scaled in HP. <laughs> <laughs> so three hits, auto attacks only, abilities do not work on wards anymore, everybody. That's right, and and also going back to the, what Kelly just said in the sound on ward skins only deploy, play on deploy and death. Um, some of the wards, uh, notably like the helicopter or Apollo wards kind of stuff, mm -hmm. would kind of shoot little missiles throughout its existence, and yeah. it would make noises so to let you know where it is. Um, it still uh, plays on deploy and death, so some of these you know more elaborate ward skins probably still not going to be great for your high-level competition play, but uh, no longer quite as easy to spot out in the casual queues. Uh, Kelly, you want to go ahead and take us away on what's going on here with Bulwark? Uh, Bulwark is a fixing issue that caused Bulwark's passive to trigger on respawn if purchased while dead. And that's pretty much that for Bulwark. Oh, right, yeah. That's <laughs> I don't know if you ever, have you ever had this happen to you? You like, buy the Bulwark, and then you respawn, and it immediately goes like, hey, you are at under like 50% HP, here you go, there's your passive, and then you don't have it for a minute when you first buy it, so... <laughs> That's been fixed to make um, sure that these items are wonderful and help augment your play. That's right. And uh, leave your feedback, guys, on to our forums, which is forums.smitegame.com, or to the uh, subreddit, which should just be slash r slash smite. 
That is. So uh, the first item that we're going to be looking at is Odysseus's bow. You may have seen this accidentally uh, was available is as a tooltip on PTS at some point. <laughs> uh, but Odysseus's bow is a 40% attack speed item. The passive is each basic attack has a 25% chance to trigger chain lightning. Ooh. Damaging the target up. Damaging that target and up to four additional nearby enemies for 30 flat damage plus 50% of your total physical power. It cannot trigger more than once every second. It costs 2,300 gold and is built off of the balance blade with executioner engine size. So it's a little like Zeus's attack, but um, uh, very weak. A little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, in, in terms of the mechanic of how it works, mm -hmm. it's, it's probably piggybacking off of that chain lightning idea. Um, the distance between the targets, I think, is a little bit shorter than Zeus's chain I would lightning, hope perhaps. So. Um, and the idea here is that this item grants. Uh, it, it's a couple of things, right? There's, it's almost like a mini crit. Mm -hmm. um, a crit is a 200% damage hit. A, this is like you get an additional 50% damage if it procs, plus the 30 base. So this would be good against characters like Geb that can't be crit or can't be crit for full power, right? You still get that 50% proc. Uh, also good for gods like maybe Shibalanke, Cupid that have trouble clearing waves but have decent ways to build into attack speed mm -hmm. or scale decently well off attack speed. They'll have some better opportunities to clear the wave with Chain Lightning. So we're going to be uh, looking at the new item, the first item in that. This is a tier one for the uh, new item. It's called Imperial Hummet, which gives you plus 10 magical power and plus 10 physical protection at a cost of 750 gold. The second tier of that is 20 magical power, 20 physical protection at a cost of 1250. And the third is 30 magical power, 30 physical protection. And the passive is you gain 15 magical penetration. Now, the alternate tier to that, and this is the per uh, personal one that I'm excited for, is the plus four magical damage, plus 50 physical protection and the passive is if you are crit you cannot be crit again for the next three seconds i feel like this is a really good uh yeah. anti-assassin item yeah let's talk a little bit about these actually if we could quickly pop into the game here uh, i have the tree up you can take a look at exactly how it all will go down so uh the imperial helmet is the base tier of this item it is a 750 gold defensive item it's mid tier at 1250 you get 10 magical power and 10 physical prot Moving into 20 and 20. So very, very straightforward here. 750 for the first 10, another 500 for the second 10. So pretty, uh, pretty effective as a tier 2 item there. Uh, nice value buy as well. And then moving right along, on the right side, you have the Dynasty Plate Helm. This is a, a fairly affordable at 1,900 gold bridge item that perhaps you would purchase after a Book of Toph and Pen Boots style, or even allowing you to open up into cooldown reduction boots and pick up a little bit of pen here off of the helm with your 30 magical power and 30 physical prot, plus some nice pen. On the other side of that tree, as Kelly was kind of uh, enumerating there, the Celestial Legion Helm. Uh, this item gives more phys magical power and even more physical protection, and is more of a defensive late game item. 3,000 to build to try to get just a little bit more out of their late game stands. I see this a lot in uh, probably solo laners maybe, but this would be more towards a late game. Potentially, yeah. If you have a mage solo laner going up against a physical one, and you also have a merc that's coming to your lane and ganking you a lot of Rohun bats, this would be a really good item for you. Although more towards a late game, you're not going to be staying in your solo lane too much. But this is still a really good item, and I'm really excited to see how the mechanic works. And if... Is one crit not going to happen to you every 20 seconds really viable, or...? Yeah, that's right. I mean, and, and this is one of the ones where I kind of was saying, you know, we're like, <laughs> we were talking about, uh, you know, these are items that we're testing. I mean, this item is 200 gold cheaper than Rod of Tahuti, uh, granting significantly less magical power, uh, 125 plus 25% of Rod of Tahuti. So it's a, it's a very, very expensive luxury item towards the late stages of the game. And, you know, we'll see if it's going to be effective, right? It, 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 but you can see a little bit where these items are going. Um, you have alternatives to crit now, mm -hmm. plus better clear for hunters, and you have an item that helps deal with crits. So, I mean, a little bit of this is, you understand that, like, you know, I think from a balance perspective, these items to me at least indicate that we're looking at ways to kind of make crit not the be-all, end-all of late game, and, and, and add some more options in so that hunter builds are no longer just, let me build six items and make my crits bigger, mm -hmm. but perhaps there's going to be more diversity. I mean, this is also another great way to counter build. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, moving on from that, that is all the items we have right now, everybody. We're going to be moving on to the gods' balance updates and fixes, and we're going to start it off with AMC Amuzenkab. His hive no longer provides HP5. Damn it, AMC. No, no, it still provides HP5. Oh, no, no, no longer <laughs> provides lifesteal. My apologies. Yes. Uh, life so steal. enemies hitting his hives could lifesteal them and no longer can. That's basically the change there. So uh, Aphrodite, and I feel like this is actually going to be a lot, uh, a bigger change than m what some people might be thinking of, is her kiss. This ability now has a three-second cooldown if it hits a friendly target rather than no cooldown at all. And the reason yeah. I want to talk about this a little bit is I know myself and plus probably a lot of other players have an issue when they try to kiss an enemy to stun them. They instead hit an ally. But when you hit an ally, you have no cooldown, so you're able to go stun that enemy instead. Mm -hmm. This is probably going to cause some issues with her trying to kiss an enemy and instead kissing 
using an ally, and then you have a three-second cooldown, so you can't get that stun. I Kelly, think you almost killed Twitch chat by, oh, saying, by saying that Muzan got nerfed. <laughs> oh, yeah. JK, guys. JK. 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 Muzan actually so is a I think this thought. is actually a bigger nerf a big nerf. to Aphrodite yeah. than what some people might think. That's right. Uh, Aphrodite is still a very, very potent frontliner, still a very, very safe solo laner with tremendous clear and heal potential. However... Uh, there's a couple things about Aphrodite's kit that was allowing her to perhaps overperform. The ability to switch targets so freely without any ability to counterplay at any point outside of silences was a little tricky. Plus, the ability to hit one target, ult, and then hit another target and have the ult still active and shielding both of them. And mm -hmm. same thing for healing. Exactly. Which was a little problematic. So now, uh, you know, there's just a little bit of a uh, little bit of counterplay there. You have three seconds after she picks a target to go and try to burst a different one, and she can't reprioritize as often. That's right. Uh, Kabraken is going to be getting a few changes to almost all of his abilities. Uh, his increased base movement speed has gone from 360 to 365. Not too big of a change there. His refraction... Well, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. 360 versus 365 is actually pretty important to note out. I mean, most gods in the game have the same base run speed. Uh -huh. And when you move up into the next tier, that puts him uh, probably up there. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm going to say probably only about 10 gods are sitting in that three that above 360 range. Really? Um, so, yeah, I mean, that, that's actually pretty good for him. He's, he's probably going to be the fastest of the Guardians, we might ask them, or in that fast class of Guardians at 365. Do you think this goes along with his kit? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it synergizes well with the fact that he has a, uh, a run speed increasing ability. So, uh, okay. it helps him kind of try to stay, keep up with the gebs of the world. Okay, then. Well, Refraction Shield, this ability has been changed to gain protections on each hit rather than remove them. Four, five, six, seven, and eight per stack per level. Max is five stacks for that. Stacks are reset after eight seconds or upon use of an active part of this ability. This ability no longer gives passive protections, as we uh, recently said. And base damage has been increased from 9140 to 190, 240 to 90. 290, 160, 200, 260, and 330. So it yeah. uh, stays the same in the early game, and then the max rank. more more increase at the uh, late game there. Pretty good. Tremor's also getting a damage buff here, uh, which is his number three, his AoE radial ability. Magical power scaling going up by 10% from 25 to 35%, mm -hmm. and also an animation fix uh, that was for Tremors to end without the ability being canceled. And uh, his Teutonic Shift walls no longer have health, but instead take two, three, four, five, six hits for enemies to destroy, similar to the wards that we just saw. And walls can now only be destroyed by basic attacks, similar to what we just saw with wards. That's right. Kabraken no longer will be destroying his own walls with his abilities, nor will single abilities be able to destroy all of them in the later stages of the game. It will take a set and static number of hits. Six is a lot. This will become a very potent ability. Uh, especially think about blocking off Fire Giant and Gold Fury attempts. Six basic attacks to take down a single section is going to be quite a bit unless you have a lot of attacks. We seem to maybe an Odysseus, though. Uh, also, the base damage of this ability was increased from 100 to 350 to 150 to 550. So, so a lot more burst. Do you feel like this makes it more viable for support? I think any time you have three abilities buffed, it makes you a lot more viable. But I, I honestly, <laughs> feel, honestly feel like he has more of a warrior's kit than a, a the support or guardian. Maybe. It, it kind of comes down to where Tremor stands, how good Spear of the Magus is, if that extra 10% scaling puts it over the top of being a reliable damage dealer. But with the burst coming out of the ultimate, plus the refraction shield getting a little more bursty. He may be this kind of burst guardian style. We'll see where he falls. Warrior may be a little tricky still because he doesn't have, doesn't have great damage output from his in hands, which is really what helps warriors be so successful. When you think about John Quay, right? He has the ultimate to bridge that gap during his cooldowns where he can mm -hmm. continue to do damage. Yeah. Uh, Kabraken would have to use tectonic shift and wait for all his cooldowns. It's maybe, maybe is my answer to that. I don't know. It's remains to be I, seen. I think we're going to see him in the soul lane more than we'll see him in the dual lane. Personally, that, that I, or maybe that I is, want to see that. That is an opinion. But uh, Chonga, the Jade Rabbit, has fixed an issue which caused him to be missing from the minimap. So rad. We see a change with Freya now. Uh, she spent some more time at the Orthodontist and Plastic Surgeon. Barely so now, knows Freya. as a goddess of uh, beauty, this was a much needed change. She had busted teeth. She, uh, not just busted teeth, she had a busted face. <laughs> she was busted. She was busted. Butter face. But not anymore. Guan Yu. Your boy Guan Yu, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, these next three are going to be these next three gods. I think are going to see uh, we're going to see a lot of feedback in chat right away on this uh, one. Oh, I don't know if it's going to be good or bad feedback, but feedback nonetheless. Guan Yu, conviction. Reduced the cooldown from 14 to 10 seconds. Reduced the mana cost as well. This is his heal, and this ability no longer provides protections. Which is a huge deal. That was one of the people. Uh, one of the reasons that people said that Guan Yu's heal was actually pretty good and viable was that it offered pretty good protections. It gives a lot of protections. I believe lot. it was 30 to 50 or 30 to 60 physical protection. Uh, this ability has been changed. No longer providing protections. However, those protections have been offset on the Talu Assault. Mm -hmm. Talu Assault has gotten its ability to steal protections once again. Physical and magical protection debuff increased from 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. You can stack it three times, and this ability now, or once again, depending on when you enter the game, steals physical and magical protections per hit, granting the protections to go on you at the same rate as the protection debuff. So, I'll take you through a little bit of the rationale of this change. Here was the idea. Hercules, like Guan Yu, 
has an ability that heals you that you need to use before you take damage. Guan Yu's heal provided a protection buff. What was happening over and over and over again, and what we felt like the issue was, was that players were not internalizing the idea that this ability should be used before initiating. Mm -hmm. That they were healing themselves, leaving combat, and thereby losing all of the benefit of the protection buffs. So what we did was we said, okay, look, where does he really need the protections? It's when he's using Tao of Assault in the lane. He wants to hit both the god and the minions while he's channeling that ability, mm -hmm. which means he's going to take a lot of aggro, which means it would be better if he was getting the protections from that ability again instead of on of his heal. It's a little bit simpler, a little bit easier to understand. And also, I think more players more often will be getting protections, which was a big deficit for Guan Yu. And it's very true. I mean, when you get that three, his Tower of Assault, you also get damage, wave clear, which is good as a support and also as a solo laner. And I mean, like at max rank, it's 30 flat 10. That's... Very, very a lot. That is substantial. The next god that is going to be getting a change is Hebo, and I'm so excited Who? for this. I oh Habwa, my Habwa. Surely you mean Habwa. I am not a big fan of Habwa, so I'm excited to see these changes. His base damage on his water cannon has been reduced from 90, 145, 200, 255, and 310 to 90, 140, 190, 240, and 290. So he's still strong in the early game, but gets uh, at least 20 damage reduced uh, towards the late game. And his water spout, and this is again one of those changes that I think. This is probably more important than the uh, the 20 damage. Oh, change. way bigger! Is that the ability no longer slows when it's knocked up enemies? That's right. Water spout is number three. Yeah, will no longer slow. And basically, the the idea here being that it was just too easy for Hubwa to kite uh, with the slow on that ability. He already has the slow and speed up for himself, and that should be sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, and that it didn't really add anything to what makes Hubwa dangerous to play, which is his escape ability being low. Mm -hmm. His ultimate really be the only thing and his water carpet, right? But not being able to range slow enemies will make it a little bit more dangerous for him to enter into melee range and kite around in melee range, mm -hmm. where, which is where he's really been excelling with those water cannons. That's right. The uh, next change that we're going to be seeing is Hercules' mitigate wounds. The damage return as healing has been reduced from a 3 to 110 to 3 to 90 percent. So the same thing starts off the uh, early game as the same and then falls off a little bit towards the late game. Uh, 20 percent, which percent is, uh, that's actually a pretty big change. Yeah, so basically the change here is that Hercules will no longer heal more damage than he took. Mm -hmm. And that's very big. That's a, I mean, that's a massive change, in fact. Um, we'll see if it's if where it puts him. You know? Do you really feel like Hercules was uh, overperforming recently? Statistically, he has been. In competitive mm -hmm. play, he struggled. We did see a very good performance from NQ today. Mm -hmm. um, generally, he's just really frustrating, I think, for most players. Um, and, and it's kind of this... Either you are or you aren't. Either you're in the know and you're informed over what Mitigate Wounds does, or you just spam the ability for its base healing. And if you're in the know, he's almost impossible to kill, and if you're not, he dies way too much. Um, so we can't really affect the people that die too much. We've already put base healing on the ability, kind of similar to that Guan Yu Conviction thing. Mitigate Wounds is just not going to be as effective if you are playing Hercules optimally. It was just too powerful. Well, after H is I, and after that is J, K. Kali is going to be the next god that we're going to be seeing getting changed. No Janus changes, <laughs> which is just unfortunate. Uh, so we see an increased damage on her lash and her destruction on her lash. It has gone from a uh, five. It seems five damage uh, increased. Yeah, it hits all three ranks. times, so it's 15 more damage. Mm -hmm. uh, and then destruction, which is her ultimate, the aura or the AOE damage it deals, also going up five per tick. Uh, Nua, her mysterious fogs base damage has been lowered from 5100, 150, 200, 250 to 50, 75, 125, and 150. So it is a reduction of 25 damage uh, overall between, or not to overall, but instead of uh, doubling it, it uh, just adds 25 damage to each rank. Fire shards on Nua. Apparently there was a bug here. I'm reading this and I'm, I'm having a, uh, even a hard time understanding what it's trying to tell me. No longer deals damage to players who were dead. When Nuwa activated the ability, but respawned before the damage was dealt. Okay, so, if you had a one second respawn time when she took to the air, and then you respawned and would have been an eligible target, it will no longer hit you if she fired the ability while you were dead. So you can't spawn in taking damage, it sounds like. Alright. Good change. There it is. Rom, uh, his astral barrage has been fixed, an issue that caused the camera to stay zoomed in after coming down from the sky. Scylla's had a, a fix where an issue where her dogs were missing from the lobby animations. I know a few people have had an issue with that. And Sun Wukong, his somersault cloud, fixed an issue which caused jumping from your cloud onto an enemy to activate the CC protections from Magi's Lushing. Oh, interesting. Usually when you see stuff like this, it's because that ability at one point did have a CC component and it was still flagged to knock off Magi's Blessing. Uh, notably, on hers in hands used to do it long, long time ago. So uh, that is it right now for the patch notes. It is indeed. Uh, so now we will move into game here, guys, and take a look at all of these lovely new gods. And uh, we'll go ahead and start with uh, with Kukulkin. Uh But just before that, as I get this set up, 
We are going to uh, go ahead and show, uh, release these notes to the Reddit and on the forums. We're doing that right now. That is right. Uh, so let's see. Do, 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 do. Submit new threat. Uh, so, uh, th I'm sorry, those will be coming out a little bit later, uh, in fact. So let's uh, go ahead and hop into game and take a look at Kakulkin. Yes, let's do that indeed. So you'll see, here he is and all of his new lovely treatments, plus the new UI and HUD elements you'll see. Uh, we'll start there on the left side of your screen here where my mouse is. You can see that these items have been combined, and you can still change those using the HUD builder and organizer, plus a little bit of simplification here at the top HUD. So a few changes happening there, nothing too big, plus uh, some icons to let you know that Spacebar does this and Tab does your double swords. Fantastic. Now, one thing I really, really like about the Kukulkin right there is that you still have the uh, the noodle jump, although it's a little bit off. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty noodly. It's pretty noodly, keeping the spirit of Al Kwong alive. And uh, Al Kwong will be coming back, everybody, in just a uh, in just an amount of time that we <laughs> in just some undisclosed amount of time. Al Kwong will be back, but he will be back. And yep. I know some people were uh, worried about that. So. What we got right here is Kukulkin, and uh, his abilities are relatively similar, just a little bit different in graphics. That's right. Yeah, I mean, basically that's all we want to show you here. Why did that end the game? Ah. What happened? Who knows? Let's try it again. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Well, you know what? I'll take this opportunity to switch to a different Kukulkin skin for you, my, uh, my lovely friends. Uh, we'll go for his, uh, his recolor. How about that? Hmm. We'll be back in the game in just a couple seconds, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, I, I, I've never seen that one happen, but I broke things, which is uh, pretty normal, I suppose. It's okay. People will blame me anyway. Yeah, damn it, Kelly. It's all my fault. Damn it, Kelly. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, we are back in the game here, and we are uh, underway. Here is this recolor where he is, uh, like, a kind of copperhead colored? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, a copperhead snake. You know, I could imagine that if it was a winged form. Yeah, That's winged copperhead. All right, sweet. Is that the name of the uh, skin? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, some of you guys might have seen this earlier with Kukulkin. We've already showed him during a uh, a little bit of a sneak preview earlier in the week. So not too many surprises here, everybody. Slipstream. His abilities are still the same, but different names. And uh, nothing's changed. I know with the uh, Hunbat Sun Wukong change, we changed a few of his abilities. Has that similar to... Oh, wow. It appears that Kukulkin is not working right now, so... <laughs> All right. Well, you guys already saw him. Who needs to see it again, right? Good to know those things before we ship the patch that using one ability from Kukulkin will sometimes break the game. All right, everybody. Speaking of breaking things and uh, games. This is bar this is actually far more difficult than what it should uh, be. Uh, 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 there it is. <laughs> is. Is that what you were here for? <laughs> I wish we had a camera for this. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on right down here? We can flame that. <laughs> <laughs> He's breaking the desk. Hi, Harris. Bye. <laughs> well, we are going to make our way back into the game here, guys, and take a look at another... Uh, it, it's, it's the middle one, yeah. And we're going to take a look at <laughs> another... For those of you that are just joining us, if you've never been to a Smite stream, this is our fearless leader and uh, owner-operator janitor. Like, uh, an serious. hour ago, I was just talking to Bart how I really love the fact that we're moving towards a more professional look, but how I kind of missed... She was like, I miss it! I, mi I miss, like, the random hectic moments where Eros used to pop in and wear his flashing glasses whenever Bart was going too slow. I was just talking about that. And now we just had our CEO and owner of hi -Res crawl all over the ground and pop his head up on stream for a total of 15 seconds. Oh, it brings back memories. We'll try one more time to go into the game uh, here. This time, we'll go ahead and grab uh, Odin, and we'll talk about his abilities and his actual scaling and his numbers. We'll talk a little bit through it here. Um, so what uh, the community seems to be responding very positively to the Arachne change and very negatively to the Odin change. Why do you think people are responding negatively well, to Odin? I, th I think most people are concerned that Odin is going to be much weaker after this change. And um, Why would people think he's weaker if his ultimate is subs like just a far better version than uh, Well, Nola grants him a lot of protections... Let's see, what are you using? Protection, CC Let's immunity? Let's go look at her. <laughs> you got damage item. You got damage item. Pixel Buster Freya. So, uh, number one, nothing changes about her balance, of course, but here is her number two. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Shh. Just let it happen, Bart. And there is her uh, damage sword. I'll take a look at her uh, activating her number one. We gotta turn this up. Hold on. I know. I'm I'm like freaking out right now because I haven't seen everything with her, and I'm I'm just 
I'm about to have a panic attack. You know what? I've been I've been complaining about Sayo Freya because he's been playing that Freya a lot, and we saw Freya earlier today actually dominate. So uh, I think we're going to be seeing some more Freya from uh, everybody ever. Uh, do the. Uh Do the banish, okay. but do it like far away. Look at that. Look at all like the polygons and everything. Oh. All right. You think it's time for uh, taunts and jokes? Yeah, let's go ahead and run over into the jungle here. I don't even know what that means. The winner is you. It's a all right. She taunts. Kind of, she kind of sounds like nausea. Ever tasted pure ownage? Oh yeah, a little Castlevania for you. Get the heck out of here, you nerd! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. The princess is in another castle. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know she sounds like she sounds like the girl from Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the greatest thing ever. That it really is. That is my favorite thing of all time. All right, guys, now that the video is over and uh, you got all the information and a nice surprise at the end there with Pixel Buster Freya, I want to uh, just throw some um, some things in that I, that I really liked about the uh, patch notes. First, I really think Coco Khan looks pretty pretty damn awesome. Um, I'm definitely going to miss out Kong. He's one of my favorite gods to play, but um, for what's replacing him, I I'm not too disappointed. Uh... Second, I like the fact that Sacred Dragon obviously is being kept in with the voice pack because that voice pack is pretty epic. Um, I've seen some complaints about the Bacchus Elvis skin. Someone said to boycott it on Reddit, and I, I don't agree. I, I, even with it being in the chest, um, I, I guess I'm okay with that. I don't mind. Because, um, I mean, it's really not that going to be that hard to get because I, f I still feel like there's so few things. I mean, there's a lot of things, but there's also, like, compared to some other games that use this type of system, there's not that much. Uh, uh, misdiagnosis voice pack, pretty cool. Hope it sounds good. Um, I didn't get the icons. Also, uh, while I'm talking, let me apologize. Twitch, for some reason, is really screwing up for me. Um, so I don't know why, but like it keeps refreshing and, and, and stuff like that. Like, So I didn't get the icons information, but they said it was a bunch of country icons. Uh, opening chests when you already have everything, it's good for me because I do, and it'll say I'm awesome, I guess. Multi-day rentals, that's very cool for people who need to rent uh, gods. Conquest Worshippers Adjustment, I really like that idea because I feel like it's the longest, it's 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 the match where you're putting the most effort into, um, so, so you're going to get more out of it, I hope. Basic Attacks Only for Killing Wards, great idea because some gods obviously can kill wards much quicker using abilities and not have to waste as much mana as, say, like, Sobek or Bacchus, um, who are primarily going to be the ones doing it. Uh, new Items... Odysseus bow. Odysseus's bow. I don't. I don't know a whole lot about the items like that. You know the bows. You know all the itemization info. Um, but that sounds like a crazy damn item. Like I feel like that's going to be pretty powerful. I could be wrong because, like I said, I don't know all the theory crafting with 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 uh, items and stuff like that. But the new helmet item, uh, which gives magical power and physical protection. Glad they got that, because I've been wanting something that gives us magical power and physical protections. Um, I think I skipped over a little bit of that because of the reloading, but most of the information is there. Afro Kiss has a three second cooldown. I understand the change. Uh, am I going to like it? Probably not. Because I play her solo, and solo is my main. Uh, Kabrakin, obviously he needed changes because he was such, uh, so poorly... Um, I don't know. He needed changes. He needed buff. So it's a good thing they did that. 
Um, Guan Yu change, definitely understandable. I don't feel like, why, why would you use a heal before you engage? Even if it does give you the protections, you're not guaranteed to really benefit from them. Hebo, everyone touted about his three ults and, and blah, blah, blah. So I, I, I'm, I'm okay with that change, both of them. Hercules, reduced healing, um, definitely needed. I mean, I've seen Hercules' heal from 10% health to 80% health just from using it once. And uh, when you hear the caster saying he's nearly unkillable or he's, he's unkillable during competitive play, there's, there's a problem. Yeah, you can counter the healing, but it's, it's, it's still a problem. Uh, Nuwa nerfed Fog, uh, good deal, um, ha, may, some people think her ult will need a, 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 a nerf, but uh, Aegis nerfs her ult pretty bad, so. I was very surprised that Mercury didn't get any changes with, with just how much he's getting banned and instantly picked if he's not banned, so. And I'm a really shitty Mercury and jungler, and I did pretty damn awesome when I'm in a casual match last night. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get much to see on Kokokan, um, but from the little that we did see, you can see that he's going to be pretty awesome. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and like and sub if you uh, want more news and stuff when it comes out. I pretty much get it up instantly.